So where you put some money into some bank account. Um, percent interest through four two nine percent. It's compounded every other month, and so we're going to have that for forty five years. So which formula are we going to use? little step so that the formula makes more sense. Why we would use this formula. Okay. Uh, 25,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0329. Make sure you get that as a decimal. Over so 6. Every, every, other month. every other month is every two months. Yeah. Six, that's happened six times. So let's just look at So if I add that 0 0.005 and so on to 1, I'll get 1.0058, I think it was. Three repeating. Right. Multiply that by 25,000. When I get them multiplying this together, will it be bigger than 25,000 or smaller than 25,000? How do we know? The number we're multiplying it by is so more than above one. one. It's above one. Huh? It's above one, just not a lot. Yeah. But, but it's a little, just a little bit. Um, well, let's do that. Let's see what happens. So we'll take this, we'll add one to it, so we get that one point. Better. Multiply that by 25,000. We get 25,137.08. That's a little bit more. When will you have that much money? After two months. Not too much, yeah. Yeah, just two months. So what we did is we took this right here. This is what you, this is the percentage you would get in one year. But then we're compounding it more often than that, so we're going to get one sixth of that percentage after two months. And we're going to get another sixth after another two months, and another sixth after another two months, and another sixth, until we have all six sixths of this point, uh, or 3.29 for that. Cut this guy into six pieces, and we get a sixth of it each two months, each every other month. So this would be Uh, when will it be compounded next? In another two months, so in a total of four months. So this is our twenty-five thousand one hundred thirty-seven eight cents. We multiply this by one point zero zero five four eight three repeating. Okay. Then we're going to get that little bit more for the the next. No, there are some nice Four brackets. Months. And if we want to go for uh, six months, we'll multiply it again. For eight months, multiply it again. For ten months, and for twelve months. And how many times in one year, for one year, how many times will we have multiplied by this? Six, six times. times. Six times. Let's clean this up. This is much easier. Yeah. exponential notation to say I'm going to multiply that six times. I'm going to get half a percent, and a half a percent, and a half a percent, and a half a percent. Right? Point, point zero zero five is half a percent. You can use that decimal over two times. Keep getting that half a percent every two months, and at the end I'll have gotten 3.29 percent, but in little pieces, or each piece is one sixth of 3.29 percent. That's for one year. Right, for six compoundings, and how many 
times is going to get compounded total? Six times every year, 45 years altogether. So what's six times four? 270. So this is going to happen 270 times. Two months after 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 two months. After two months, after two months. 270 times we're going to do this. That's why we have the six times 45. And wouldn't you have to put the parentheses? The way it's written right now is, is correct. But if I go use my calculator, yes, I do want to be careful about how I enter it. And if you did it, it would be, right, you'll do that with parentheses and then you'll eight times 25,000, so I'm gonna be right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again just because it's more accurate. If I just put in 1.005483, it'd be pretty good, but it's, it won't be as good as this. And I'm gonna raise it to two, and if I'm gonna put six times 45, I need to make sure that the calculator knows that six times 45 is the exponent. If you don't put parentheses and you put 6 times 45, it'll raise it to the 6th and then multiply that number by 45, which is smaller. Uh, well, this way it's like some ridiculous power. Right, like it was the 6th power and then you multiply it by 45. Right, but it's some ridiculous power of some number that's just barely bigger than 1. So instead, I multiply by 45. Like eventually, having a bigger power is better than a like multiplier. Yeah, eventually, we're gonna check this. So for a big enough number here, that's gonna be bigger than whatever. Like oh. five, whatever. Oh, I did that right now. Mine ended up like in the 15 million. Yeah, something would probably happen. Yeah, it, it gave me that kind of interesting job. 109,435. And ninety cents. Yeah, it's bigger. It's over a million dollars. One million one hundred sixty-two thousand five hundred twenty-three dollars and sixty point four cents. If you just multiply by four. Because like the calculator is gonna multiply this together, get 270 and use that as the exponent. But will that and will that be written right? Like say if we put that and put you that. 270 right there? Yeah, to like simplify that uh, simplify a little bit more. Of course. Will that still be right? Of course, because that's what's in the exponent, and whatever you put here that's equal to 270 is still gonna be right. Because it's oh, okay. it's from six times forty five. So you put two seventy, that's what six times forty five is, that's what the exponent needs to be. You could do uh, 540 over 2. That's also equal to 270, but that's going to be 270, and this is going to be the right exponent. Okay. Okay. Whatever you put in here, as long as it's equal to 6 times 45, then it'll be right. We can uh, not sure. bring this back up. Now I won't need parentheses, because I'm just putting the number there. 270, as long as you're talking about 6 times 45 is 270. So if you took it to the sixth power and then times the same number to the fourth, fifth power, it's still the same thing. Huh? 1.005483 uh -huh. repeating to the sixth power times 1.005483 to the 45th power would be the same as 1.005483 to no. the sixth times 45th power. That would be the same. What you're saying would be the same as six plus 45. Okay. Uh, what would be the same uh, is if all that was raised to the 45th power, right? That would be the same. This one's actually a lot bigger. What is? That compared to what you like, said. What I said compared to what it yeah. actually is. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. This is bigger than what you said. Okay. Bye. 
is bigger, and someone has a bigger exponent. Six times forty-five is bigger than six plus. Usually. Yeah. Usually, I guess. Long. Um. Let's see. The last one was log base one third of uh, eighty-one. Negative four. Hmm? Negative four. Oh, negative four. So the coordinates is negative four, and uh, can you be so sure? Because three times three times three times three is eighty-one. So okay, since if you just to took one. one over three to the fourth power, then you get one over eighty-one. So you have to take it to the negative exponent. Uh, so if you make this a negative four, then the negative gives us the reciprocal of one over three, which is three. Okay, we raise it to the fourth power. Logarithms are fun yeah. to say and to do. So when you're approaching these problems, remember you want to take this number, the base, some power, and get this guy right here. We want to get 81. So if you if you don't write this down, uh, it can get a little confusing. If you write it down, though. You could work in steps, figure out find out three to the fourth is eighty-one. How do I get this to be three to the fourth? I need a negative exponent. I remember if I raise to a negative exponent, I just get the reciprocal to that positive power. Um, and yeah, so some some things that I've seen like uh, take something to the one third and get eighty-one. No, we don't. That's not the exponent. That's the thing you want to raise to the exponent. This is raise it to that power to get that. Or some 81 raise something to get one third. Because I know I did that. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Though, that's, we could kind of work backwards from that and kind of figure it out, but that, that's not good. That'd be, that'd be confusing. Remember, we want to take this to some next one. That to some degree. Is that. So, technically speaking, you don't need log. All the, you could express this by one third x. One third to the x equals eighty one, mm -hmm. and you just solve for x. Yep. So figure out what x is. Log is just the fancy way of saying it. Yeah, in a sense. That kind of makes it semi superfluous. Um. Well, it's, yes, kind of, but it, it's like saying that uh, Unless if I wrote the square root of 57 equals x, well, that's the same thing as saying x squared equals 57. Yeah. Right? But basically, one thing that it allows me to do is to solve for x. To express it in some way that we understand what the symbol means. It means to find a number that multiplies by itself to give me 57 and that x and I can use my So it's the opposite of a logarithm, an exponent. But uh, an exponent is already the opposite of a square root. And well, the, the opposite of a logarithm is an exponent in that like log base. Uh, plug something in here, I'll figure out what the exponent is. Right? If I plug something in for x, I'll figure out the exponent. Um, but let's switch. Let's switch my head. Log base 5 log x. So if I plug something in there, I'll figure out what exponent I need for 5, or I, I need to find out what exponent I need for 5 uh, to get that x. Right? So what I input is the number that I want to get by raising 5 to some power, and the output is the exponent. But 5 to the y equals x. Now I can put something there uh, and figure out what I get. So I take 5 to some power and figure out what 5 to that power is, which is exactly the reverse of what logarithms do. Cool.
Oh, we want to call it what it is. This, this is where I want to put stuff into. I'll call it x. This is where we get stuff out. I'll call it y. So technically speaking, x and y are interchangeable. We just have decided as the math community that x is an input and y is an output, but they don't have to be that way. Yeah. But if I give you something with x and y, then you're safe to assume that x is the input and y is the output. If you go assuming the other thing, well, then that'd be kind of weird. So it's like the order of operations. It's just something that we agreed upon so yep. that everyone spoke the same language. Yep. That's basically it. Okay. Cool. Um, do we have any more questions about graphing exponentials, uh, calculating interest, or uh, understanding what a log is? Can you just do one uh, more? Uh, like yes. a, a log? Yeah, a log, please. Um, yeah. Log base four. This is exponent of 4. That will give us 1 over 16. Negative 2. Let's see. 4 to the negative 2. For the negative, if you raise, really we could write it like this. 4 to the negative 1 squared. Because if we multiply these together, which we should do if we're going to combine these together, we get 4 to the negative 2. 4 to the negative 1 is just 1 fourth. When you square that, you multiply it by itself. We get 1 over 16. So I've got negative 2. We found it. It's negative 2. Log <coughs> um, base 32 of 2. I'm going to take 32, that's what we're looking for, 32 to some power, and net 2. I'm not going to raise 32 to the second. Mm -hmm. Negative 5, 32 to the negative 5. Now the negative just tells me to take the reciprocal of 32 and raise it to the fifth. So we got like a huge number. One fifth. Here. We got the right idea here. One fifth. What does it mean when I raise something to the one fifth? The fifth root. Fifth root, 32, that indeed <coughs> is 2. So yes. Let's do another one. Here's your I think we'll be happy with this. Okay. Well, if there are any more questions, then we need to practice our graphing logarithmic functions. Uh, Solving equations, solving exponential equations, solving for the exponent, and uh, properties of logarithms. Go ahead, coffee pot. I thought you just like drank very much coffee.
remember that this is a function, and functions, input, output. It's always about input and output. Again, that's like half of it. 50% of your understanding of functions is just that you put something in for x and get something out for y. Uh, you can put, well, for the logarithm, for the logarithmic functions, you can almost put anything in there. You can put it Sometimes I look at you and you're like, like you're hating what I'm talking about right now. No. But it's okay. I mean, it's not the most exciting stuff. Okay, so we can put almost anything in for x, but we can't take the log of like zero, and we can't take the log of negative numbers. Let's really quick remember why that is. Let's say we wanted to take the log base two of zero. What? To, what is two? Two to the what? Would be zero. One. Possible. Zero. Two to the zero? What's two to the zero? One. That's not going to work. Oh. Okay, two to the like one half. Well, that's just the square root of two. That's not going to be a zero. Um, two to the one, what, what would it be? Negative one? Two to the negative one? Two to the zero. It would be just one, one zero to one. Be, be right. One over two. Two to the negative one is one over two. Two to two the, two the two one over four. zero. Huh? Two to the one over zero. Can't divide by zero, so that's not a number that we can use. Well, so can we like give it an imaginary of a I. letter, like I? Why not? Because it'll always come up well, like one. I'm trying to make me into this. This is already something that you and I have talked about. No, I mean, Suffice like, it to say, dividing by zero square, is bad. Square root of a negative number will get you something times I, right? But how do you but, have something over so zero? So dividing by zero does not have anything like that. You can't say it's like, oh, I, or let's call it or whatever. Like it just it has, it has no way to interact with other numbers. It is not a number that we can conceive of. It's not even a concept we can conceive of. The square root of negative 1, we kind of conceive of. And it turns out when we multiply the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, we get a real number back. Right? So there's ways to do that. But to divide by 0, because of lots of different reasons, there's just no way to even talk about it. There's no way to use it. No way to get to interact with other numbers in a significant way. If you could divide by zero, then one would equal two, and two would equal kumquat, and just the whole thing would fall apart. <laughs> it just can't be done. You can't divide by zero. I wish I could just write two on a piece of paper and get kumquat. What is that? If, if you could divide by zero, then your dreams would come true, and you could do that. But you can't divide by zero. Okay. okay. It's a kumquat anyway. So It's like a small orange. I don't know what kumquat. So two to the something is zero? No, that's impossible. Two to the negative one, that's just one half. Two to the negative two, that's just one fourth. Two to the negative five, that's just one over 32. None of these numbers are zero. They're getting close, but they're not zero. So that means that x can't be uh, three. X can't be three, and x can't be anything less than three. Or, yeah, can't be anything less than three. Yeah. Because also, if we try to take log base two of a negative one, or any negative number, we run into the same problem as zero. Like, there's just no way to get down there. We can't make it zero, we can't make it negative, we just, there's no doing that. If you look at the graph of an exponential function, go back and back and back and back. So it's one of the holes in that. Yeah. Look at, this, is, this is the kind of graph we get when we, when we take a number and raise it to the x power. We can get really big numbers, and we can get really small numbers, but there's a limit. It just, there's, just at some point you can't get below a certain value. And so in this case, it can't get below three. So is there like a yeah. hole in that line somewhere where the, like that singular value doesn't exist? And then so when we graph, I'm not sure what you're saying. So when we graph it and uh, we have that, we'll have to you know, put a line uh, on the horizontally on the three. Vertical. This one we'll put vertically. Yeah, vertical. Excellent, excellent point. So uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Just go this can't. The answer to this can't be three then, because then you have log base 2 of 0. It'd have to be anything above 3. The so answer can't be 3? Like the output can't be 3? Well, whatever we put in for x can't be 3. Whatever we put in for x can't be 3, and it can't be less than 3. Can't be 2. Can't be 2 and a half. Can't be anything that's 3 or less. It's got to be more than 3, strictly more than 3. So we could say the domain of this function is such that x needs to be bigger than 3. That's kind of what we're saying. Anyway. That's exactly what we're saying. And so. Yeah, Tyler made a good point. We need to put a, a line there. Well, we don't have to, but we really should to let us know that we shouldn't go that way. We should not cross over into this area. 
X cannot have that value. Okay? Because if I put 2 in there, 2 plus 3 is negative 1, and log base 2 of negative 1 makes no sense. But I could put in 3.1, all right, and that is, is, is a real one. That, that exists. Wait, wait, the 3.1 is silly. Right? 4. 4 Let's try a 4. If put a 4 in there, we'll get that y is equal to log base 2 of 4 minus 3, which is 1. Can I raise 2 to some power and get 1? <laughs> 0. So y is 0. Log base 2 of 1 is 0, because 2 to some power is 1. Okay, great. So I just found a point. Uh, 1 is my, or sorry, 4 is my x value. 4 is the number that I actually put into x. Then I got 1, and then the result was 0. 4, 0. So there's 4. Let's use a different color. 0. Or zero. So what do you think? Like, uh, what if we put 5 in there? Let's try 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. What's log base 2 of 2? 1. 1. 1. Because 2 to the 1, 2 to the 1 power is 2. So then you got another point. We put in a 5. We got out, uh, oh, so you got a 1. 1 was the output. We got 5, 1. Uh, 4 minus 5. Going well, how about six? Six minus three. Well, this isn't looking so good anymore because now six minus three is three. What's log base two of three? Some fraction that we don't care about. Yeah, so like two to what power is three? That's one point something one point ridiculous. Something. One point something, we don't really care to figure that out because why would we if we can plug anything we want for x? Have anything we want. So how about seven? Seven minus three, four, four. Is four, and that is something that's easy to get by taking two to a power. It's my guy. Okay. Two. 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 Place this. Two squared is four. So we put in seven, and we got out two. So five, six, seven. So I've gotten out 0, I've gotten out 1, I've gotten out 2. What if I wanted to get out 3? What would I have to plug in for x? Because to, to get 3, this would have to be what? 8. 8. Log base 2 of 8 is 3, because 2 to the third is 8. So then what I plug in, at, you know, I'm going to subtract 3 from. So for that to be 8, this would have to be 11. So plug in 11 to get 8 so that the output is 3. So 11, comma 3. Uh, what is that? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 3. So we're going to have to go up to 4. We're going to have to go further and further out to get to 4 and 5 and 6. That number inside the logarithm has to be quite large. If Wait. I wanted to get 5 out of there, this would have to be, what would this have to be to get 5 out? It's doing its natural curve. No matter what you know, like that, it's just moved over. It's doing the, yeah, the curve that a logarithmic uh, function graph should make. But to get 5, if I want this output, output, output to be 5, what would I have to have right here? 32, and so then I have to put in 13. 35. 35. 35. No, it Right, it'd have to be 35, yeah. minus 3 gives me the 32, then I would need to get 5, because 2 yeah. is 32. I was doing wrong, I was supposed yeah. to find this. Yes. So our graph looks like this, and then it's just going to get less and less and less steep because. Uh, the, the more I want to go up by one on the y value, I have to go way out there on the x axis to get there. Right? I have to go all the way out to 35, like we just said, all the way out to 35.
so that I could get up to a y value of a stunning 5. So at some point we're just saying, like, well, those x's are getting too big. Um, we said that x can't be anything less than 3, so that, uh, that alone just tells us, like, log base 2 of something, so we want to come out with negative 1. Well, what would have to be in here? There's going to be 2, so the negative 1 will be this thing. 1 half. One half. So what would I have to plug in for x to get 1 half? Put in three and a half, so there's three and a half, negative one. And there's three and a half, come negative one. And if I put three and one quarter, three and one fourth, then three and one fourth minus three would be one fourth. And what's log base two of one fourth? to the negative 2 is 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So yeah. log base 2 of 1 fourth is negative 2. I found a couple of old points. Uh, Closer and closer we get to three, and the more and more negative y. <coughs> well, not negative three. Closer we get to three. Let's do that. Let's do that on the other one. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, so we can put anything we want into this function, and uh, you know whatever comes out comes out. Uh, well, we know we can't put in four because that'll give us four minus four, and that's zero. That's not good. We can't put anything that's less than four. So we can just go ahead and say the domain is what x needs to be greater than four and not equal to four. Can't put equals to there. Um, so. What do you think would be a good number to plug in for x? Five. Five? Five. Okay, because what will happen? Put five in there. Using function notation, I'm telling you what I'm going to put in for x. You get log base six of five minus four is one. Is log base six of one easy to find? What's log base six of one? Zero. Log base anything of one is zero. So we get zero plus two. Two. So g of five. Less and less like five. Five in gives me a two out. Two is the output. Okay, let's get rid of that. in there. 10 minus 4 is 6. That's log, log base 6 of 6. Put in 10 and got out 3. And we go again. So what do we plug in for x? You said 16? Yeah. 16 minus 4? 
is 12. What's log base 6 of 12? Because how do we get 12? We take 6 to some power to get 12. Oh, no. We're not trying to do 6 times, so no. we're trying to do 6. The maximum we'll be trying to get 30, uh, 6 times 6 so 36. Okay, so, so you'd like to have 36 40. show up here? So 40. So we need to plug 40 in there. We want this to be 36, and we're going to plug in 40. 40 minus 4 is 36. Log base 6 of 36? 6. Wait, down. Go down. Two. Two. The exponent is what we're looking for. 2 plus 2 is 4. Well, now, we're looking at 40, comma, 4. 4 is not bad, but 40 is huge. 40. Maybe we should kind of go back the other way. Yeah. Instead of playing. So, let's see. We put in 5, and 5 minus 4 was 1. Uh, we put in 10. 10 minus 4 was 6. What else would be good to wind up? Get the parentheses here. 36. We just did that. Oh, we did? We put 40 in. 40 minus 4 is 36. Yeah, it was a good idea, but it's already been done. I get um, 1 over 6. So 1 over 6 would be good. Because what's log base 6 of 1 over 6? What? Negative 1. 6 to the negative 1 is 1 sixth. And then plus 2 is 1. 2 and 6. Is 1. So that's great. But what did we have to plug in for x to get that to happen? We're going to subtract 4 from whatever it is to get 1 sixth. So what should we put in? Um, 4 and um, 5, uh, 5 sixths. Mm -hmm. I think so. It's a little easier than that. 4. 4 and a 6. Right? If I take 4 away from this 4 and a 6, I'll have 1 6 oh. left over. Hit it. If we plug in four and a sixth, we'll get negative. No, we got one. Well, we got lots of points. So let's plot those points. We know what logarithm graphs should look like. So we got four and a sixth. One, two, three, four, and a sixth. Very small. Comma one. So order of operations wise, we figure out whatever's in the parenthesis, and then basically just work from left to right. Because logarithms weren't covered in Lucy's cube by doing it so. It's true. No, I don't like it. We had this. We have to add an L somewhere. Or log. We don't want to do that. Yeah. Please excuse um, my dear layman. So. So what's next? Uh, ten comma three. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have very precise hand-drawn graphs. Thank you. I always compliment you. It makes me feel good. One, two, three, four, five, and okay, lost it. Five, comma, two. Five, comma, two. And we could do 40, comma, four, but do it. Do it. Well, I got the, the x needs to be bigger than four, which means I, I, I did something wrong here. When I count off four and a six, I count off three and a six. That should be one seven. Oh, we gotta stay to the right. The graph needs to stay to the right of this, bigger than four. Actually, we got this over here and it swoops down like that. Okay. See so if we if we just plug in some x's and find some y's, we don't need to worry about shifting or left, shifting or shifting down. That graph's pointy. It is kind of all pointy. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Hey, Gordon, your shirt is green and gray. Hey, Jake, go <laughs> back to sleep. <laughs> Okay, so we want to expand this thing. Uh, Is that what it'll look like if we graph it? No. 
So uh, we, we went over the different properties we have. We have properties for logarithms when we have a quotient. When there are quotients, we have log base 4 of x minus log base 4 of y, the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. Subtraction, not addition. Addition is for when you're multiplying. Okay. Now, this is a product itself, so it can be expanded too. But remember, whatever this expands out to be, it's being subtracted. So that whole thing in parentheses needs to be subtracted. Log base 4 of x minus log base 4 of 3 plus log base 4 of y. And if you like that, or we can distribute the negative to both. We get minus log base 4 of 3 log, minus log base 4 of y. Okay, now we want to condense this. Before we can start putting things together, like that property that says log base b of m uh, plus log base b of n equals log base b of m times n. There's like nothing in front of the logs here. There's no mention of anything in front. What do we do with those things that are in front? There's another property that says if there's something in, let's say it's a k, in front of the log, base b of m, then that guy can come up and become the exponent. So it's log of base b of m to k. So we can do log base 4 of 2 to the 5th, plus log base 4 of x to the 7th, plus log base 4 of y to the 4th. I feel like this would be somewhere where more parentheses would be Parenthesis? What is that? 32. 32. 2 to the 5th is 32. Log base 4 of 32, since we're adding, we do 32 times x to the 7th. And we're adding again, so we can do log base 4 of 32 x to the 7th y to the 4th. Okay, that's going to do a little bit. That's condensed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hope you get out of the video. I thought that made so much easier. It's like a lot of my pieces of knowledge. Gordon, why would you want to make it easier? It's too easy, Gordon. Okay. Why don't you have to do that? Well, this is passed out the review. Are we going to have a problem? We're going to have a blog. Plus log, plus log, Write it using logarithmic form, log base e of 7 equals x. Right? Because e to what power gives me 7? x. e to what power gives me 7? Just rewriting it using log. So ln of 7. Yeah. Log base e, natural log of 7, is what x is. This almost looks like that. If we subtract 2 from both sides, you get e to the x plus 5. Now take the tip. Rewrite it in a similar way. We get the natural log of 25 equals x plus 5. Because that's log base e. e to the something gives me 25, that's that something. And we subtract 5. So natural log 25 minus 5. Yeah, it's 